It is with deep honor and pleasure I now welcome Mr. Kave Madani Lari Jani, Deputy of Education and Research and Acting Head of the Center of International Affairs and Conventions of the Department of Environment of Iran. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, Mr. President Bula, Excellent Executive Secretary of UNFCCC, Honorable Ministers, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to, at the outset to express my profound gratitude to both the people and governments of Fiji and Germany for jointly hosting this cup here in Bonn and the hospitality extended to my delegation. We are all pleased to see that there is finally a global consensus about the need to act strongly to mitigate climate change and to adapt to its impacts. Reaching this consensus was not a trivial task. While we deserve cele celebrating this success, we should not forget that the next step is even more challenging. We often get too busy negotiating over the targets that we forget that we also need means and realistic pathways to the end goal. The major unresolved issues now are designing effective policies to change the current development model, to share the burden as to who pays for the economic cost of policy change, to balance environmental and development policies, to reflect fairness in obligations and in payments for cost of change, and to provide developing countries with the means of implementation, particularly finance and technology transfer. We must put more efforts into identifying feasible paths and processes that can help us address climate change in a fair and cooperative manner based on two fundamental principles. First, because of their historical responsibility for global warming, the developed countries must, must take the lead in mitigation and in providing finance and technology to, to the develop, developing countries without shifting the burden onto these countries. Second, benefiting from the fi finance and technology provided by the developed counterparts, the developing countries should take responsible climate actions, but not at the expense of their economic and social development. These key principles are in the provision of the UNFCCC and, and the Kyoto Protocol, and the Islamic Republic of Iran has defended them strongly throughout the negotiations that led to the pa Paris Agreement. We strongly believe that unless these principles are fully respected, we just add more targets to our already ambitious agendas of sustainable development, eradication of poverty, proliferation of health and education, etc., without developing the mechanisms that enable us to solve our shared problems through fair cooperation. Mr. President, movement to a low-carbon economy is one of the environmental mandates of our supreme leader. In this movement, as an intermediary step, we have already replaced liquid fuels with natural gas and, and we plan to further increase the share of this resource as well as nuclear and renewable resor resources in our energy mix in line with our economic diversification goals. Iran's energy transition provides a very competitive market for those interested in increasing energy efficiency and renewable energy development. Iran's INDC is very candid and affirms attractive financial incentives for foreign investors to join in partnership. Excellencies, four decades of international and extraterritorial sanctions have had a multiplier effect on the adverse impacts of climate change on Iran resulting in environmental degradation. The imposition of unilateral coercive economic measures contrary to the international law by some developed countries as well as the politicization of JEF and GCF decrease the country's ability to cope with the adverse impacts of climate change and violate the rights of many people. In transforming Iran's INDC into our first NDC, particularly building on the nuclear deal, JCPOA, and elevated engagement of the European Asia and Asian partners, Iran's future plan shall stand ambitious in harmony with the global move and heavily rely on the full implementation of the JCPOA and unhindered financial and technologic transa transactions and transfers. The Islamic of the Islamic Republic of Iran honors its commitments and promises that are fair, 
balanced, constructive, and help us keep the delicate balance of national development and greenhouse gas emissions reductions. Mr. President, I'd like to draw your attention to the specific sector that has been largely overlooked in the climate change negotiations as well as, well as the Paris deal. Water scarcity is a serious threat to food security with significant socioeconomic implications that will be exacerbated by climate change. Believing in the need for adopting a nexus approach in developing sustainable solutions to climate change, we propose that the issue of water sector to be included in the agenda of COP24. Ladies and gentlemen, progress in COP negotiations give us, gives us hope, but we all need to work together to preserve our shared planet. Indeed, we have an obligation to contribute our fair share to this moral imperative. Thank you.